good evening everyone hope i am audible yes uh, i would like to share my slides uh is it visible yes, yes. Okay. yeah i hope i am audible too so uh, i would like to begin by thanking uh, dr choni dr mayur and other members of the homon india for this opportunity and thanks to dr siddharth for the kind words of introduction and i must also thank dr logesh for simplifying my task by at least 50 percentage so i'll be skipping skipping at least uh, 20 percent of my slides because of his uh, wonderful session so i'm supposed to sort of discuss the diagnostic challenges in 46xy dst and we will do it in a structured fashion and i will try to do some case scenarios four to five time permits so this is something dr logesh already alluded to the steps of sex differentiation and i wouldn't want to repeat the whole thing the only thing to remember is that uh, there are these non gonadal transcription factors which are which often escape our attention and which have a huge role to play in the development of mostly external genitalia and some minor role in the development of internal which some people would try to uh, classify as malformative dst timelines factors involved again i wouldn't want to go into the details all of us are aware of the importance of the 13 weeks male sex differentiation paracrine effects of the gonadal peptides the various factors involved in the testicular descent etc etc and so the question comes what goes wrong in 46xy dst so basically if you look from far the factory looks good the carrier type looks good x y everything is in place but if we go closer we find that things are not that right because of the various steps involved some of the transcription factors in the post sry or even sry may be defective so then you have disorders of gonadal testis development it may be just a functional defect so it may be just an enzyme being knocked off or receptor la dsd as you all know 46 xy over testicular dst is a distinctly rare entity and then you have the other so called miscellaneous group many of them are malformative dst and of course there are others distinct ones like cryptorchidism to to great defect isl3 defect etc etc so let's move a bit closer and have a a good view of what goes wrong so these are the steps overview of the steps there may be problems with development there may be problems with the classical pathway of testosterone synthesis we should not forget the importance of this has been described but this is something which should keep in mind and then there are this uh, androgen action gonadal peptides problems and malformative defects so let's look at them one by one so this is about developmental issues and we already heard dr logesh talking about it and i wouldn't dare to go into all the transcription factor descriptions we all know about the importance of sry sox9 there are other soxes as well rspo1 wnt4 wt1 etc etc then we have this classical pathway defect and it's important to remember the starting points which sometimes we forget starts off from 17 dehydrocholesterol and at the receptor point of view it starts off from the lh so we can have lh receptor defects presenting with dst which all of us are aware of and then we have the delta 5 pathways uh metabolites delta 4 pathway metabolites ending with 
pi alpha reductase and androgen receptor. So this is the classical pathway. And of course, there is an overlap with adrenal steroid synthesis. So many of these defects are associated with adrenal insufficiency. Non-classical are the back door pathway. So most of it is about direct synthesis of DHT from 17 hydroxyprogesterone without the intermediate testosterone step. So 17 hydroxyprogesterone by the action of various aldoketo reductases or three alpha reductases, uh, the other name for that, leads to production of dihydrotestosterone. So this is important in fetal life. So how do patients with 46XY present? So most part, it's this presentation is very simple. It's under viralized male with fully descended or partly descended gonads. And if there is an adrenal synthetic pathway involved, there might be adrenal insufficiency as well. Or it might be a severe degree of under -realization. female appearance uh, with an inquinal mass, peripubertal viralization, delayed puberty, um, uh, apparent female child presenting with gonadal tumor, these are the some of the very important presentations, but it can be uh, still subtler, like isolated hypospedias, cloacal or complex anomalies, persistent Muller induct, or it may be a part of a syndrome, as we saw earlier, uh, which do not have a direct connection with testicular development. Ascox syndrome would be a classical example when you can have genital abnormalities without much of uh, granadal defects. So let's uh, go into some case scenarios now before that. So it's important to have, take a good history and do a good physical examination. And of course, uh, there might be clues from history, for example, premature ovarian failure, female infertility, which may pertain to SFN mutations or even partial androgen insensitivity. Uh, hypertension may be important for some of the CHS and hypokalemia and hyperkalemia are associated with various CH defects. And urine protein, creatinine, etc., are important in conditions like WT1 mutations. We already had this detailed description of scoring of external genitalia, so I'll skip that. So uh, so just before we delve into the case scenarios, let's uh, you know, just have a broad perspective of what we are going to do. So one of the first steps is, of course, to rule out adrenal insufficiency. Uh, patients who have adrenal insufficiency may not have the classical pigmentation and other manifestations, especially with conditions like uh, uh, sandrine alpha hydroxylase deficiency. So basically, if you want to simplify things, we can have this broad uh, sort of five groups. There are these uh, conditions with gonadal dysgenesis in which testosterone and or precursors may be low and FSH may be elevated. But it's important to realize that it, when the defect is very severe, because of the severe testosterone deficiency, the LH and FSH may not be very much uh, elevated, just like what is described in complete androgen insensitivity. So that might occur. LH receptor mutations usually associated with higher LH than uh, can start from right at the start of the pathway to down to the synthesis of testosterone, 17 beta HST3, uh, where you have abnormal testosterone and dion ratios and androgen insensitivity syndrome and this 5-alpha reductase. And I think all of us are now aware of the fact that the ratios are not very much reliable. Still, a uh, ratio testosterone by DHT more than 10 is something just been found very useful. But the final word is the genetic testing. All right, so uh, this is a crowded slide. I've been a bit lazy. So just to uh, put uh, focus on um, uh, multiple cases with the same diagnosis. So you have this uh, child 
or you have this baby with a micro penis, subcoronal hypospadia, XY, DST, very low testosterone. And if the physique is not uh, sky high or not very impressive, it's just around five. Uh, normal cortisol response, low AMH, and of course we thought of the possibility of because of the low AMH and inhibin. Uh, inhibin was not available in this child. AMH was low. We thought of the possibility of some sort of a dysgenetic uh, uh, syndrome, and the baby was proven to have SF1 mutation. Another. Female-looking child presenting peripubertal viralization, at least two to three of patients presented uh, in the last two years. Same syndromic diagnosis, SF1 mutation, none of them had adrenal insufficiency. So this is something which is coming up in a big way and it's uh, very uh, common um, you know, these days. Once we think about it, we know that it's uh, all around us. A lot of uh, the, so I think the equations are changing now. We used to think that partial energy. So various steps of adrenal and gonadal development, adrenal uh, in development and myriad of uh, manifestations, complete gonadal dysgenesis, partial gonadal dysgenesis, primary over insufficient as part of the manifestations of s mutation. This is another baby who presented as a neonate with respiratory disease for guessing the diagnosis. So this is a, a WT1 mutation. The urine protein was uh, positive. So depending on the time of presentation and the coexisting tumors. So I wouldn't want to spend a lot of time. So prominent ones being GATA defects, cardiac defects, MAP kinase defects, etc., etc. So this is another case scenario, just to think, put things into clinical perspective, uh, apparent uh, thing. So what would be the differentials for the situation? So obviously this is going to have a lot of differentials. So we can think of a pan mirage or image syndromes. So in this patient, the 17 hydroxyprednisone was sky high, so the diagnosis underviralized male underwent multiple operations and survived these operations. Uh, small testes, very low progesterone was elevated. So this is a uh, classical 17 alpha hydroxylase deficiency. Uh, he had survived at least two surgeries under general anesthesia without any problems, probably because of this uh, mineral coach. Had presented with cryptorchidism, um, normal male looking genitalia, and trouble started when people did an ultrasound and they detected something similar to uterus, and then all hell broke loose. And the laparoscopy detected deep inguinal ring, gonads, fallopian tube, and right here. Yes, it's a type 2 PMDS uh, presenting with. Uh, retained muller things other than karyotype, fission, QT, PCR. Nowadays, it's very important to have a group on the genetics and sequencing and panels. The problem with this test is that the copy number variants are missed by times we require the assistance from SNPs or CGH arrays to make the diagnosis. So, so I think uh, that's the end of the talk. Uh, I don't have many great uh, take-home points for this uh, uh, patient hearing of this session.